learning Quad Copter 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Soko Rashid. Soko Rashid was first to say his first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins a shout out. So, congratulations. Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here with a review of the new HRH9 drone. Now, this drone is relatively inexpensive, running around $49. And if, when you see a price on a drone around, four, you know, under $50, <laughs> around that range, you know this is a beginner's learn-to-fly drone. And that's exactly what this is. Okay, keep that price in mind. You are not going to get yourself a cinematic uh, drone that's able to go out and produce uh, commercial-style videos. Not in the $40 price range, $50 price range, folks. No matter what the advertiser advertises on this, or the manufacturer advertises. Okay, again, very inexpensive learn to fly drone. Um, it's available in black or orange. I like the orange colors because it helps you see the drone easily in the air. You know, these black drones and gray drones, they tend to disappear when you get a little too far, especially these smaller ones. Uh, but nice orange color helps with visibility. It helps maintain your eye on the drone so you can bring it home if you're <laughs> flying a little too high and too, too fast. Now, again, I mentioned it is a folding drone. And right now, I got to mention also that I have prop guards attached to this drone. Uh, the reason being I'm, first, I'm going to do the first uh, flight indoors. If we're in the indoor flying of these drones, I do recommend leaving prop guards on. But when you go outdoors, take them off again because these prop guards, you know, can end up to be Christmas tree ornament holders if your drone impacts a tree. And you'll never see it again until, you know, next fall or next spring, maybe, if it gets blown out of the tree. Okay, um, again, in the $50 price range, another thing you should not expect to see is brushless motors. This is a brushed motor drone. Uh, what that means is these motors will fail with time eventually, but you should get enough good flying flight use out of this to help you improve your skills of flying. As I mentioned before in another video, you don't want to go practicing as a beginner on a $1,000 drone <laughs> because all beginners crash. It's just inevitable. Okay, for a beginner, you're going to learn from your mistakes. And don't go crashing a $1,000 drone to learn how to fly a drone. You don't need to do that because the control on a $1,000 drone and this little toy drone are essentially the same. These are throttle, this is yaw, this is pitch, and this is roll. Same on this and the same on the $1,000 drone. So you'll be able to learn to fly a drone before you go out and buy that expensive drone. That's, uh, that's why I recommend that, folks. Now, this is powered by a 3.7 volt. 1,000 milliamp or hour battery, or maybe I'm wrong. No, 1,200 volt. It says, yeah, it says 1,200 milliamp or hour. I'm sorry, 1,200 milliamp or hour, uh, 3.7 volt battery. No, looking closer, that says 2,000 milliamp or hour. So that's different. What's advertised? Um, that is a good sized battery if that's truly 2,000 milliamp or hour. And they are advertising this with 20 minutes of flight time. So. We'll see if that's true. It just might be with that big battery in there. But, oh, another thing this has, which is good for beginner flyers, is it has optical flow. And what does optical flow do? That helps you automatically hover this drone without your need to give it um, input to prevent it from wandering away. Now, how well that will work for this uh, $50 drone, I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out when we take it down in my basement to fly. But uh, that should help uh, maintain a steady position in the air so that you don't have to manually correct for drift of the drone while it's flying. Uh, very important for beginner flyers if that's actually in there. This also has altitude hold mode, which automatically will maintain a steady altitude of the drone without you needing to manually adjust it with a throttle, along with headless mode, one key return and flip features. And I'll, I'll demonstrate those when we're out flying this down in the basement and then possibly outdoors also. Now, another thing is this is advertised with a 4K camera. Now, really folks, you are not going to get a 4K camera drone in the $50 price range. It's just not going to happen. So really what this is, is this drone uh, records a video or photos to your phone over a Wi-Fi signal and those video and photos are interpolated from a lower resolution um, image sensor in this camera to 4K, which is 4096 by 2160 pixels, still photos. Okay, so this takes still photos in 4K, but again, they're interpolated, interpolated from a much lower um, 
resolution image sensor. Right now, I'm guessing it's around 0 0.3 millipec. <laughs> millipec, <laughs> sorry. 0 0.3 megapixel camera on this that's interpolated to 4K. Okay, um, in reality, folks, there is no need to be interpolating a uh, lower resolution image to higher resolution. You don't get any improvement in, in image quality by doing that, by interpolating that uh, low resolution uh, sensor to 4K. Um, it's, uh, you know, the only reason they're saying that is for advertising purposes so that they can claim this is 4K. But again, in most cases, in just about all cases, in a $50 price range, you're not going to get a true 4K drone. Now, the video that this takes is also interpolated from that sensor, but it, uh, it's interpolated to 1080p, actually 2048 by 1080 pixels at 20 frames per second. So again, this is not a cinematic drone. You're not going to be go, able to go out there and uh, become a commercial drone operator flying this drone. But you will be able to learn how to fly that type of drone that you'll need to do that. So that's where this comes into to play. Now, I mentioned that you're um, recording. Uh, let me talk about that right now. This camera does not have a SD card sensor on it or an SD card uh, writer on it, which means this cannot record directly to the drone. What this does is this transmits the photos and videos to your phone where it's recorded using a Wi-Fi signal from the drone. The drone emits the Wi-Fi signal to your phone. Your phone receives it and uses an app to interpret that signal to see the video from the drone while it's in the air and also to enable you to record that video and photos to your phone. Now let's talk about that. This uses the KYFPV app to record those videos and photos and do the FPV video but this uses 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Let me stress this, make it clear. Not everybody has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi on their phone. Okay, a lot of people only have A, B, G, N, 802.11 A, B, G, N. Um, older phones do not have AC Wi-Fi. Uh, newer phones do have it, and we'll be able to use this phone. But what I want, why do I want to stress that? Before you purchase this drone, it's important to first verify that your phone indeed can receive 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you'll be very disappointed when you get this drone and you'll find that the app does not connect to the drone. Okay? Now, there is an advantage to that 802.11 AC, and I'll, I'll tell you why they're using that, is that's transmitting the signal on 802.11 AC over the 5 gigahertz frequency range. Okay? Now, these controllers, nearly all of them, are transmitting on a 2.4 gigahertz fr uh, frequency <laughs> band i'm sorry um if this had 2g 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi you know 802.11 a b and g um that would interfere with this controller so the advantage to using the 5 gigahertz on these drones is that there's no interference between the two and thus you should get relatively stable video from the drone recorded to your phone We'll see if that's actually true when we go flying in the front yard here. But the video, instead of getting Wi-Fi frame dropping and uh, frame uh, frozen frames, um, that should be less of an issue since this is using 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So that's it. Let's go over what you get in the box. You get um, instruction manuals for the app, the KYFPV app, along with instruction manual for the drone. It's written in Chinese and also in English in the back. shows you... Uh, how to get it in the air. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to get it in the air when we go fly it. You get the drone. You get a set of prop guards. I'll be using, again, these indoors while I'm flying indoors. But when I go outside, I'll take these off and we'll fly it without the um, um, guards so it don't land in the tree. Um, you get one battery, but you can also purchase additional spare batteries with it. And actually, they might be worth getting because this one's labeled a 2500 milliamp per hour. Let me double check that, folks. Well, that's that's 25 mill, 100 milliamp per hours. This should be the same. And the five seems to be wiped out on that one, so I couldn't read it. So, 25 milliamp per hour battery is a pretty big battery, especially in the 3.7 volt range. So, you, we they actually this actually might get 20 minutes. We'll find out when we go fly. Uh, but you get the battery. Uh, you get spare propellers, two propellers. You get a uh, charging cable to charge the batteries, and I forgot to mention, this battery is charged through a micro USB port, okay, using a, a phone wall charger. I recommend using a phone wall charger instead of your um, 
computer port on your uh, laptop to charge this because a computer laptop USB ports usually are around a uh, 500 milliamp per hour um, power so uh, that would take forever to take a long time to charge this particular battery I would recommend using a 2 amp wall charger um, to charge this to get it charged in a reasonable reasonable amount of time okay um, you also get a screwdriver for changing the propellers and you get actually a full set of screws I can't it's out of the picture I'm looking right now but there they are to use in changing the propellers they are they are changed using uh, little Phillips screws which go in the center there and you get the controller let's go over the controller um, it is a standard toy grade controller powered by three double A batteries and uh, the controls on it are this is throttle it's mode 2 this is yaw this is pitch and this is roll the other buttons on this is automatic takeoff button this does have an automatic takeoff capability you do a quick press on that button and it'll take off and when you want to land you can do another press and land it I do not recommend using automatic takeoff indoors because I already practiced with this drone did a practice run and it tends to send the drone up high close to the ceiling where in the case of me <laughs> this got sucked into the ceiling and was scratching all my propellers so uh, do not use the automatic takeoff button indoors. To take off indoors, just bring both sticks down and out and hold it that way, or down and in and hold it that way. And that will start the motors. Then you can give it a little throttle to take off Okay, by pushing up. Um, this button here is for changing the rates. That's the speed of the drone. You can adjust that by pressing that button there. It has beginner, intermediate, and expert. And each one of those increases the pitch on the drone and, and the, the also in turn increases the speed on the drone. This button here is for calibrating the gyros on the drone. Since this is a gyro stabilized aircraft, um, you put the drone on a flat level surface and press this button before takeoff. I recommend doing that every time. And that will calibrate the gyros to lessen the uh, chance of this drone wandering on takeoff, even, even though it's optical flow. If, it, if its gyros are screwed up enough, it can still wander. So you can uh, eliminate that problem by doing a quick press while this is on a flat level surface. This is the on-off control for the drone, or for the controller. You, and a, a quick press turns it on, and a long press turns it off. Uh, this button here is for headless mode. Again, I'll show how that's used when we do uh, the flight on the drone. Uh, this is one key return. I'll also demonstrate that. Now, one key return is not return to home, folks. All this does is it makes the drone fly the opposite direction it was pointed at takeoff. Again, it is not a true return to home, and the reason being this does not have a GPS. Uh, let me mention, if you are looking for a drone with true return to home and landing capability, look for a drone with a GPS built into it. If it doesn't have GPS, you are not going to get a return to home drone. <laughs> okay, just wanted to mention that. It does have emergency stop, so if you end up in a tree or crashed and you don't want to prevent hurting those motors, do a press on that button so, to, you know, so that you can quickly shut down this... Uh, hello, or this um, quadcopter before it burns out its motors and this button here is for flips this does have flip capability and I'll demonstrate that outdoors do, do not use this indoors because that's another way to crash into the ceiling with these particular drones because when they do that flip they normally go up high and then they flip <laughs> so in the case of this this would probably impact the ceiling so that is the HR H9 drone Let's first take it downstairs to my indoor flight test facility, give it a flight down there, and then following that, let's take it outdoors and see how it flies. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101, and welcome to the Quadcopter 101 indoor flight test facility. Uh, before we get started, I want to show you one thing I forgot to do, and I always forget this, is to show the this drone does come with a nice carrying case for the drone and its accessories. So, if you're wondering if it came with a case, it does. Okay, to get this drone in the air, um, this one's a little bit different than other toy drones in that you need to turn this controller on first before you turn on the drone. If you go the other way, it doesn't recognize the controller when you try to bind it to the drone. So we're going to turn on the controller first, and then we're going to turn on the drone by pressing its on-off switch on the top until its lights come on, and then we're going to connect it by moving the throttle stick full up, then full down. Let's try it again, folks. Only well, let's be a little bit quicker in doing that. Turning off the drum, turning off the controller, or turning on the controller, 
turning on the drone, and then moving up and down, and we have a bind. So you got to do this kind of rapidly, right after you start the drone, do that bind, okay? Again, start the controller first, turn on the drone, and do a quick up and down on the throttle to bind the drone to the controller. Now, I'm not going to do an automatic takeoff, but uh, before we do the takeoff, let me connect the Wi-Fi to the drone. What I'm going to do, folks, is turn on my phone's settings, Wi-Fi settings, and look for the signal, Wi-Fi signal coming from the drone, and connect my phone to that signal um, using the same way you would connect to home Wi-Fi, except there's no password involved. So give me a second while I do that. Hold on, folks. Okay, this is the KYFPV app available on Google Play and iTunes. And all we need to do is hit start. And we do have the FPV signal coming from the drone. Now, I forgot to mention about the photo button and the video button. That's right here. A long press starts the video recording and a short press uh, takes a photo. So let's take, or let's actually start the video recording by a long press. And we see that the video light turns to yellow. Alternately, alternatively, <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, but you can start the camera by just pressing that button on the app, too. You don't need to actually use this photo and video button. You can use the app, and I'm going to use that later because it makes it simpler. Okay, again, to start off indoors, I recommend starting the motors by bringing both sticks down and out or down and in. And then to take off, all we do is push up on the throttle. Let's see if there's any drifting. Now, notice there's some drifting. And that's possibly because I forgot to do something. Remember I said before takeoff, let's press this um, um, calibration button to calibrate the gyros on the drone. So hopefully that will correct that drifting problem, problem we just saw. So let's start it up again. Down and out. And then throttle will take off. Uh, it's still drifting. So the optical flow on this, I'm not so certain how accurate that is because this is drifting, as we can see there. So again, the optical flow on this does not seem to be operating properly. But let's see if it'll stop itself. Maybe it needs brighter light. We'll find out when we go outdoors. Let's just see how it flies for now. Now I mentioned I was gonna, this has headless mode. What does that mean? Let's press that headless mode button. Head, headless mode is on. Okay, now with headless mode, that's always forward. Behind me is always back. To the left is the left, and to the right is right. It's always is, no matter which direction the drone is pointed. Watch, it's pointed to the left, I pull back. No, oh, headless mode is not operating. So, headless mode seems to be an issue too. <laughs> Hold on, folks. I'm doing something wrong here. I am doing something wrong. Let's try this again. We'll put it on the ground, calibrate the gyros, take to the air by both sticks down and out, giving it some throttle. Headless mode on. I'm going to hold it down this time. Okay, held the button down. It seems to be, be on now. You've got to hold it down for like three seconds. Now, what does this do? Let me rotate to the left. Again, this is always back, that's always forward, this is always right, and that's always left. So, what I could do is rotate the drone. Forward, back, left. It doesn't care which way it's pointed. This is right, left. Keep rotating. I can rotate it quickly. Left, right, left, forward, and back. So that makes it easier for beginner flyers, you know, that it's always, that's always forward, this is always right, this is always left. Again, it makes it easier for beginner pilots to fly this particular drone. Okay, now one key return. Let's keep it in the headless mode, send it over here. Now it was pointed in that direction when it took off. So one key return will fly behind, or backwards, toward me. So let me, let me move it over here, press the one key return. And there's one key return. Again, that is not a true return to home feature in that if, say I'm over here, when I press that button, it could actually fly away from me. So do not depend on one key return to bring the drone home to you. Okay, with that in mind, let's turn off that headless mode for now.
I'm not sure what it's doing. <laughs> Let me land it because it was beeping. Maybe I just need to do a quick press to turn that, that headless mode off. Let's see. Quick press. No, it's still blinking headless mode. So let me long press it. There we go. Lights have gone solid, so now headless mode is off. So let's take to the air again and see how it flies just maneuvering. Giving it throttle and turning it. Now we're in beginner rate. This is pretty fast uh, turn rate for beginner rate. Pretty fast indeed. Let's go to higher rate and see what it does. Second rate. Okay, bringing it over closer, going up a little higher. And that's why you want the prop guards on indoors. <laughs> I should be demonstrating the rates outdoors, folks. Let's put the prop guard back on again. <laughs> again, that's why indoors you want to have prop guards on. Outdoors, you, do, you don't. Again, they act like Christmas tree ornament holders. Okay, taken to the air again, and this time let's go into highest rate. Oh, I got to turn the drone back on. Hold on while I do that, folks. Let me stop the video recording. And turn off the controller. And then turning the controller on. Turning the drone on. Turning the, oh, the battery came loose too. Hold on. Okay, turning the controller off. Turning the controller on. Turning the drone on. Then binding it up, down, and it is bound. Okay, let's take to the air again. Uh, doing the calibration before takeoff. Starting, okay, are we in third rate? Okay, we're in highest rate right now. Let's see what that does. Oh, it sticks down and out. Take into the air. Let's try the pitch. Yeah, extreme pitch. Actually, I should be using this outdoors, demonstrating the rates outdoors. So I'm going back to beginner rate. Um, I'm not sure what this is going to do indoors, and that's why I don't want to do that. So let's just try the maneuverability in low rate. Low rate, it's pretty maneuverable actually. I'm surprised. It has very bright lights on it to help with you uh, maintaining orientation. Look at that, <laughs> that brightness on that thing. So it actually is a pretty bright drone. So that's about all I'm going to demonstrate indoors. And this still has a lot of power in it. So what are we going to do next, folks? Let's take it outdoors so we can demonstrate other features of this drone and its camera especially. So hold on, let's take it outdoors and see how it flies. So hold on, folks. Good morning, welcome to the Quadcopter 101 Outdoor Flight Test Facility. In other words, my front yard. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. to take off, um, I've already bound the drone, already connected the app. I'm going to start the video camera by pressing the camera button on the app itself. And then to start the drone, let's take off using the automatic takeoff button, which is this button right here. And let's, I want to see if it stops drifting with the optical flow system. Maybe, maybe not. It's drifted backwards. So, yeah, the optical flow in this is kind of sketchy. <laughs> okay, this is the same battery that we were using downstairs. I haven't charged it yet. But while we're out here, let's take a look at the neighborhood. You know, it's glory here in fall. Look at those trees. I went to show you the trees around here. Really pretty out here today. But rotating a drone, just to show you the, well, the optical flow is working up there. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> it's actually working. Rotating. Looking down the street. So, once you get to altitude, it actually seems to work. But down here, not so much. Okay, let's go a bit higher. The reason being, I want to show you, look in that direction. See if we can see Lake Erie now. Not high enough. And I'm not going to go real high with this particular drone again, because it's a toy drone. But let's come back down here, because I want to show you the other features. So, first off, okay, notice I took off the prop guards for outdoor flying. But let's do those flips. Okay, pressing that flip button, then telling it which direction to flip to the right. Let's try a, a left flip. Flip button to the left. The optical flow is working now. I don't know what the deal is. It wasn't working over grass. I guess it depends on what surface 
it's looking at below the, you have to have a lot of contrast, I guess. There we got a little bit of a drift here. Come back here, over here in the street. And let's try it. Okay, while we're here, come down. Are you gonna drift backwards? Yeah, he is. <laughs> okay, well, let's see how it flies now. Try and, these are called funnels where you do uh, pitch forward and to the left, and then you give it maximum yaw, like I'm doing right here. Come down a little lower so you can see those funnels. Okay, that was in rate one, beginner's rate. Let's go to rate two. Actually, let's go to rate three, high rate. Whoa, this thing goes fast. Wow, that's a lot of pitch for... <laughs> I'm gonna hit myself. <laughs> okay, it's it's so fast that you really can't do funnels with it because it'll it pitches down low enough that it loses um, it loses altitude. So this high rate is very high indeed. So let's go back to low rate and demonstrate headless mode again. Um, let's turn on headless mode by holding down the button. And let's see which that's forward. This that's left, or that's right. This is left, and I'm confused right now. <laughs> okay, turning off headless mode. One key return. Okay, that's the opposite direction. That's not toward me. So again, one key return is not a true return to home. Now, one thing I'm noticing right now, folks, is that I might still be in beginners, right? Or is the lights are flashing. If you can see that, Right now the lights are flashing, and that, what that means is the battery's getting low, so I don't know if we're going to get that 22 minutes of flight time. But keep in mind, you know, I was flying indoors first, and then we came out here to fly it outdoors. So, okay, before it, it runs out of battery power, let's, let's see if I can do a picture. Oh, no, that's it. No more flight time. Again, the, the still photos. I'm going to, de going to demonstrate still photos, but they are just frame grabs from the video. Again, interpolated to 4096. But let's talk about the drone. Um, it is another good beginner's learn to fly drone. The thing I like about it is it's using that five gigahertz. And if you have a five gigahertz or a, a phone capable of using 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, again, the advantage of that is your video is not going to be uh, interrupted by frame grabs or frame dropping and frozen frames like you see with 2.4 gigahertz. You should get more steady video. And I don't think I've seen any um, frozen frames or is dropping. So again, this is the H9. What is it? HR H9 <laughs> drone? Good beginner drone. Again, for the learn to fly for new beginner pilots. So hope you enjoyed this flight. It's Quadcopter 101. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. <music>